وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين خصوصا سيدي ومولاي أبا الفضل العباس Dearest viewers, send your salams upon the two that gave away everything that they had fi sabilillah. Look at those golden domes and send your dua to them. Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept the intercession of these two perfect human beings. For they both stemmed from the lion of Allah. They both stemmed from the face of Allah and they both stemmed from the hand of Allah, none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al Mu'mineen. Two warriors, two scholars, two perfect individuals trained by this man. O oh people, I ask you to send your condolences to Umm al Banin and to Mawlati Fatima al Zahra, salam Allahi alayha. We promise we will never forget the sacrifice of these two phenomenal individuals and to that we say Abad Wallah Ya Zahra Ma Ninsa Husayna We swear by Allah O Zahra we will never forget Aba Abdullah Dearest viewers, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh and welcome to Karbala, welcome to Imam Hussein TV, welcome to Karbala today where we continue with our live broadcast here from the holy city, the city of mourning, the city of grief, yet the city of the Shias of Ali ibn Abi Talib, known as paradise on earth. We would like to continue to bring to you various footage from across the holy city, from within the holy shrines and across the different parts of this city with regards to the ongoings, the buzz, the drive, the passion in everything that is going on, all important noticeable things we wish to bring to you. We hope you enjoyed yesterday's show and we hope today will be like no other and to whet your appetite just a little bit. What we would like to do is to show you some footage as to what happened the moment we stepped outside our office. Just about 10 a.m. this morning we were setting off on to go and film and see what was going on and literally two minutes in after stepping out of our office we were immediately into action and I was, I was going to explain what was going to happen into this clip but I think it's best left if I let the pictures do the talking. As we can see, we have a young child here making her way to the shrine of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, crawling the whole way to gain that shifa'a. She'll get on her hands and her knees and it doesn't matter, nothing will stop her from reaching that shrine. Just a young child making her way, making their way to the shrine on their hands and feet. An extraordinary sight for such a young person to, to have such faith in Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. This is a true Khadim, I say. I genuinely have no words and neither did the camera crew, neither did the people surrounding this servant of Aba Abdullah, nobody had any words. What a moment to see such a young girl crawling her way to Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. I leave it to you, to your imagination to imagine 
what the reward for this young servant of Abu Abdullah is. Truly inspiring, something for us all to try and take in and absorb. And I think it's important to say that even off camera, some people may say, oh, maybe she was only doing it for the cameras. The reason why we stopped is because we saw her and she hadn't even seen the cameras yet. And to see that, for us grown individuals, it reduced us to tears. It reduced the many around to tears. And I'm sure it reduced Abu al-Fafl al-Abbas to tears. To see such an occurrence, surprisingly, is not that, you know, it's, it's not a rare sight in Karbala. Wherever you go, there are people crawling and making their way. Whatever it takes, if their legs aren't working like was in the case here, they will do whatever is required to reach that golden dome of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and Imam al-Hussein alayhim as -salam. It's inspiring. It pushes you further. It makes you think, am I doing enough? And that somewhat encapsulates the current vibe within this city. Young, old, various races, everyone comes together in this world gathering in the largest gathering within the world in one area last year reports say 20 to 25 million this year from iran alone there have been 30 million visa applications ya allah over 30 million visa applications from just one country so i leave it to your imagination and to inshallah the channel's duty to express it to you as to what is going on to illustrate to you how people are coping and to further your enlightenment as with regard to the love of Aba Abdullah this encapsulates it in its entirety unfortunately I do have bad news to share with you however maybe good news for the families of those involved and you'll understand why in just a moment today after we met this young servant we set on to what's known as Bab al-Baghdad known as the gate of Baghdad so it's almost like the entry point from the motorway from Baghdad into Karbala very near to the shrine and that's where we were going to do our footage today and alhamdulillah we did and you'll see it later in the show however as we just left our office to come to the studio we were tortured to hear the news that a bomb, and not just one, four to five bombs have gone off in that exact location. In the gate we were filming in just this morning, four to five bombs on the streets, Valley Street. And if I can just put it into context as to how, how close this gate is to Karbala and to the Holy Shrines, it only took us 20, 25 minutes to walk there. This is the length that these people are going to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows their fate. And just to show you the vibrant nature of this area, of this highly populated era, area of servants and lovers of Aba Abdullah, I'd like to leave the footage to show you the hustle and bustle of this area, inshallah. See the route, this time from Baghdad through to Karbala. Yesterday we were on the route from Najaf to Karbala, however now we are coming from Baghdad to Karbala. Of course, the services are still running as normal. The Zawar, the, the Khadm of the Zawar are still giving out their free tea. And I'm just going to pick up some here, inshallah. But as you can see from here, the service does not stop. All the Khaddam are always here, ready to serve. All of the servants of Aba Abdullah, they are always here uh, to help us. So, inshallah, Habibi Shukran, Ma'ajurin, inshallah, Ma'ajurin. What you have here is just the normal Haraki tea to keep you going and stimulated for the rest of the journey. We are now inside a mokib. You've seen many of the mokibs around, you've seen them from outside but you haven't had an opportunity to see what it's like in one of these. You can see the different decorations, the pictures of the great saints. 
This place every evening gets packed out with Zawar who need a place to stay, who need somewhere warm to stay and to have their breakfast, lunch and dinner. We were just speaking to some of the servants of this Mokib and they said they receive up to 200 people every night. And you can see that by the sheer amount of blankets, pillows and coverings they all have. They hold Majlis just outside. They have the Lotmiya playing all day and night. They serve them breakfast, lunch and dinner. And that's the beauty. Each and every one of these Mawakib from Baghdad to Karbala from Nejef to Karbala, from all the different provinces, are filled with these streets with Mokib serving the, the servants of Ahl Bayt. As you can hear, this genocide across the world, we must start to analyze to sift through and eradicate all the false and all the lies and to accomplish this it's time to open wide our eyes for on this issue we'll never even contemplate to compromise rather we will continue to stand up be heard and rise just as the skies when they hear of an innocent demise drops blood as opposed to tears when it cries the suicide bombers think that they are shaheed and that Jannah is their prize. Little do they know that they bestow upon us shuhada and that Jannah is our prize. Their irreversible move is horrendously unwise. How long will it take for them to even realize maybe they need to look through some real eyes? Under the banner of Islam, they try to disguise. Those who love the Ahlul Bayt, they completely despise. And each murder they commit, our love for the five will continue to rise. Each arm they sever is replaced by a wing wherein paradise flies. Maybe their tactics and philosophy they should start to revise for the Ahlul Bayt. For the Ahlul Bayt, we're drenched in our love. And this love, it never dries. It drips onto the next person and it permanently applies itself onto their heart. And that love increases in size and this love never runs out. It's in unlimited supplies. We, the Shias, have dealt with thousands against us and we'll deal with it again. There's no change in our bravery from Ashura to today. It doesn't matter when and to the Ahlul Bayt, to the five that we love, we'll continue to send our salutations, our blessings and our thanks. It will never end. When will you accept the evidence in your own books? The truth you continue to bend. Watch how when you're in Barzakh, to the Ahlul Bayt, you wish they would descend into your graves. You wish their hands they would extend. But why should they? When throughout your life you always did intend to make their lovers suffer, be oppressed and constantly offend. You'll regret your actions. That moment your soul departs. You'll realize that Allah to the perfect 14 they are never apart, and then you'll realize why we have ma'asumeen instilled within our hearts. Ya Muhammad, Ya Ali, Ya Fatima, Ya Hassan, Ya Hussein, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. As you saw in the footage just earlier, how vibrant, how active, how heavily populated the area of Bab al-Baghdad is. Yet, what we realize is that despite all these bombs that go on, the streets will continue to be full. The shrines will continue to be full. Planes from across the world will continue to take off and land and they'll come to Karbala in their flocks. Nothing will stop them. I look you in the eye and I tell you, nothing will stop us. 
This love for the Ahlul Bayt, as I mentioned in my brief poem, is in unlimited supplies. And every time you kill one of us, this love of the Ahlul Bayt, it just drips onto the next person. It never stops. It really hits our hearts when we heard this news. Because whilst we were there, we spoke to a few young kids, aged 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A group of them. All of them serving at the various mawakib. And just to think souls like that are being killed simply because of their love for the Ahlul Bayt. Incredible. But the positive we take out of this that I mentioned before is that those who have become shaheed are no doubt with Aba Abdullah and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. They are with them, I have no doubt. They may not have managed the opportunity to visit Sayyid al-Shuhada, but now because they are a shaheed themselves, they are going to be with Sayyid al-Shuhada. And instead of clinging on to their graves, they'll be clinging on to his robe in Jannah, insha'Allah. What we wish to bring you on to a next clip, insha'Allah. And this is to do with various other mawakib and what they have on service. Yesterday, we spoke about the ones with the tea, with the bread, and with the pharmacy. However, this time, enjoy the footage that you're about to come through. So having just had a word with Abu Ali, we had quite a heartfelt story. As you can see, the Mawqib is named after him Abu Ali. But why? His own son Ali was actually killed in a bomb blast in Baghdad in Shah Ramadan. Thus, they've used this Mawqib to serve in his Thawab. All of them here from the Husayniya part of Baghdad are here to serve. They serve the sweet dishes, they serve all this kind of stuff to the Zawar. But they said something quite beautiful. They said, all we want, all our aim is, is to ensure that one part of this is accepted by Mawlati Fatima al Zahra. This is their aim. They come together to serve in their son's name. And when I asked him, well, are you happy that your son has been taken as a martyr in the name of Abba Abdullah, he said, I wish all of us could. This is our ultimate aim. This is our ultimate aim. To obtain that shahada for that one man who gave away the master of the martyr, Sayyid al-Shahada. Once they all finish their work here, once all the Zawar have finished, they as a mokib, as a family and friends from the same province of Baghdad, then make their way to Abba Abdullah and Abu Fadl al-Abbas to conduct their ziyarah. It's quite heartwarming to think that a father has gone through this, yet instead of sulking and being upset, he uses this alongside his family and friends to come up, gain strength and to serve Abba Abdullah. As we can see, we walk down and the mokibs just keep on going different offerings, various different things. And here what we have, in fact, something quite interesting. We have flags. So what? It's known that Abu Fadl al-Abbas was the flag bearer of Abu Fadl al-Abbas. And here we have the flags, various flags. Here, Ya Fatima al-Zahra, simply to show their allegiance. We've got various ones here. We have another one here. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. And the, ch the children, the old, all bring these upon themselves. They carry them all the way to the shrines to show their allegiance, to show that they too are the flag bearers. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Various different flags. Here we've got another one. This is just to give you an example of the various things that people carry. And the list goes on various different uh, flags that represent various different names. Fatima al-Zahra, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, uh, Imam al-Hassan, you know, Ali and al-Akbar. They've even got pictures of the beautiful personalities themselves. So as you'll see, you'll see some children walking past with these flags. They'll walk past with these flags and they'll attach them and they'll take them the whole way. I remember last year in Baghdad when we were in Calf, Maine, I picked up two flags from there, one for Abu Fadl al-Abbas and the second for Imam al-Hussein. 
and you take them all the way to Karbala and they live with you. They're a living memory. And these are available so, yeah, all the way across the street. From as small as this, they get bigger to this size. And then there's some that are absolutely huge, right up in the air that take more than one person to carry. And inshallah, you'll see a few of these along the way. Here we have a very different mulkim. We've shown you various things that are on offer. Tea, bread, we saw some sweet stuff too. But here we have something called sharba, a very sweet drink made out of pomegranates. But why? Why do they make this? Well, it's to symbolize and to put into remembrance of the young infant child that was killed, Abdullah al Ravi', the young baby Ali al Asghar who was killed by Hurmala Mal'oon. And it's just to give that sweet essence to everyone. The bright pink drink, they don't let one cup empty for more than one second. They're always filling it up once again, as you can see behind us. It's quite extraordinary. People come in, they take it, they drink it, put it back down and the cup is refilled straight away. And it's quite a beautiful sight to see with how much they make, how fresh it is and the sweet taste it gives off. I mean, we saw from that clip something quite extraordinary that connects with us right now. The Mokib of Abu Ali, the first one that was played, where they were making the sweet bread. And his son, Ali, was killed, he was murdered, and he became Shaheed in Baghdad, as we mentioned. And you just see the same thing going on just down the road once again. And it just shows what was his response his response was to continue to stand up and rise. The same response every single time. لَبَيْكَ يَا Hussein, لَبَيْكَ يَا Abbas, and لَبَيْكَ يَا Zainab. Nothing will stop these individuals. Their love for Hussein is so much that if you take away all of their family, all of their possessions, take everything away from them, they will still serve Abu Abdullah and they will still contribute till the last moment of their life to help those reach paradise on earth so ultimately they can gain nearness to these perfect 14 alayhim salam to ultimately gain further proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that we saw the flags something that personally I didn't even realize how much a phenomenon this was until I came last year in Arba'een. Yet when you come, every single person has a flag. I mentioned that I had some and I still have them up in my room back in London. And people keep these flags, they mean a lot. Abu Fadl Abbas was the Alam Dar, he was the flag bearer, the standard bearer of Imam Hussein's army. And he did not drop that until the very last moment. Thus, what we wish to look further into is to even the young children that carry these flags. Some of them, the flags are bigger than themselves, yet this is how they're entrenched in their love, encapsulated in their love. Every single action that they do wishes to express this. We saw something the other day where in Bain al Haramain, a man had a flag that was all, the pole itself was four to five meters long, a metal pole. And there were four to five of them holding it as much as they could. Then they came across and they would wave it across. And you saw the flag just overlapping the dome of Abu al Fadl al Abbas. It was stunning, absolutely stunning. And it's these symbolic acts of people carrying this flag from the moment they leave their house to the moment they reach Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas when they say, Oh Abbas, here we are, here is my flag. Your flag may have fallen, but you can see that the flag still holds high. This is them showing that flag to Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and saying, we will never let it fall. And then they go across Bain al Haramain and they say to Imam al Hussein, We are now representing Abu al Fadl al Abbas, and here is my flag to show that. Stunning. After that, we saw the sweet drink, the sweet pomegranate drink. Pomegranate being known as the fruit of heaven, where they would make pomegranate juice and serve it to all of the Zawar, all of the walkers. 
And the significance behind this was about that tragic story. That tragic, tragic story that took place to our dear Abdullah al Ravia, where when his neck was pierced, whilst in the hands of Aba Abdullah, Ya Allah, by a three pronged arrow into such an infant's neck. It's said that the arrow was so big that it went across his entire neck. It's said that when, Abu, when Imam al Hussein was holding the baby in his arms, he didn't know what to do with the blood, thus, he chucked it into the air, and that blood never touched the floor. Now, I ask you to imagine that moment when Ali in Al Asghar is taken back to his mother's lap. When he's taken back and the mother has to look upon such a child, has to look upon such a child in such a tragic way. And when you see the symbolic nature of young babies being carried in their prams, in mother's arms, across the father's necks, it makes you realize that love for a young baby that comes from the parents. And to think of the heartbreak of Aba Abdullah when this happened in his own arms. Outstanding. So the, so the Khadim then serves out this sweet juice to remind everyone of this beautiful taste. And may I just remind you, this all took place in Bab al-Baghdad, in the area where the bomb has just gone off. We have no idea if any of these khidam, if any of these servants have been killed. But if they have, and for all those that have been taken by this awful act, this repeated act, this disastrous act that is constantly overlooked, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their shahadat, inshaAllah. May he accept their efforts, those who are serving, and may he accept the intentions of those who are walking to the beloved shrines. A few people have mentioned what actually takes place during the Salah. So when people are walking and Salat al-Dhuhr, Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Maghrib, Adhan kicks off, what happens? Thus we wanted to reply and we wanted to show you all our dear viewers what occurs at this moment. So inshallah we'll have a look them at the moment when the Dhuhr Avan went off whilst on the walk. <laughs> As you can hear, the Avan from the Muwakib have started to go off. It's the time for Salah, the sun is at its peak, and what we'll see is the various Zawar making their ways into their Muwakib to go offer their Salah, for Imam Al Hussein died for this Salah. The, the lunch will start to kick in once the Salah has finished. But as you can hear, the whole way across the street, from all the way to Karbala, the Avan starts, the walk stops, and the Wajibat begin. After Salah, lunch will be served, inshaAllah. We're in the same place that we were just in just a couple of minutes ago when the Avan was being played off. And you can just hear the difference. The streets are much quieter, everyone has gone to offer their Salah. The Lazmiya, the eulogies have all been switched off because they all know Salah is the focal point. It's the ultimate reason why Imam gave his life. Thus you can see the streets are a little bit empty, some people starting to emerge. They're taking their lunch, they're taking some rest. Because the walkers start from Fajr. Fajr, you know, they start just before about 4 o'clock in the morning. They pray their Fajr about half 5, 6 a.m. And then they continue and walk all the way till Maghrib. So they take these small breaks in between and the lunch is one of the bigger breaks. They do their Salah, they have their lunch and they continue their walk on to Imam al -Hussain. Allah, that you gave your life to save this perfect religion, to save this perfect deen. Thus when the Avan goes off, whilst on the walk, we'll stop, we'll observe the prayers that you immaculately observed whilst under arrow fire from the enemies. It's said that those that protected Imam al Hussein at the time he turned around and said to those who were helping him to stand strong for you're assisting me with a wajibat that is upon my shoulders. Those companions that were there 
were drained in arrows, looked like a hedgehog with the amount of arrows implanted into them. They used their bodies as shields because their shields could take no more. All for salah. And insha'Allah, may all our salah be accepted. For that moment in the Adhan when we say, Ashhadu anna aliyan waliyullah. When we say that, we should remember the suffering that Aba Abdullah went through to enable us to continue to say those beautiful lines, Ya Allah. Yet, we must also remember that when we go through our salah, Imam al Hussein thought about his father, Amir al Mu'mineen, who was killed whilst in sajda. Yet, it's quite beautiful to note that the commander of the faithful did two of the best acts whilst in the best action. He gave charity and became a shaheed, both whilst in the beautiful state of salah. So much we can learn from these perfect individuals. So much we can learn. Imam al Hussein followed through by showing the importance of salah even whilst on the battlefield. Thus I ask myself before I ask any of you, what really is our excuse? It's quite extraordinary. Finally, what we would like to bring to you all is something that a few people have mentioned, which is the bitterly cold nature at night of the walk. Because we have to remember that people are walking in the desert ultimately. Thus at night it gets very cold and some people cannot take that. So are there any other alternatives, especially for the elderly, for the disabled, whose health are not great in the first instance, for them to stay warm and to be a bit more comfier? Thus, we would like to show you this next footage that we took again today and again in the same place where the bomb blast has just gone off, where we went inside a Husseiniyya, a Mokib that was inside, and inshallah, you'll have a look at it now. For some, the cold outside in the tents is very tough to deal with. It can get bitterly cold. However, there are Husseiniyya like this, where the Zawar are able to stay inside, grab some sleep in a warm conditions. The brothers here were just telling us that the downstairs itself holds 200 to 250 people. And when they go upstairs, even more, 100 to 150. So in total, a minimum of about 300 to 400 people are able to stay in this Mokim. It keeps them warm, it gives them the food that they require, an opportunity to perform their prayers, and of course, an opportunity to take part in the majlis of Aba Abdullah. What's absolutely beautiful is that at every single moment, there's always something on offer for those in need. Yesterday, we saw the pharmacy, the Mokib, that was a pharmacy to serve those who fall ill on the walk. Today, we saw those who cannot stand or withstand the cold at night for them to have the opportunity to go inside the Mokib, to go indoors and receive that warmth and shelter that their bodies require to continue their ultimate aim to get to Aba Abdullah. Truly extraordinary. And I think it's something for us to really recognize. That's when we, back in our own countries, host our own Majalis of Aba Abdullah. That we must be as accommodating as possible to those Azar, those who are doing the Azar of Aba Abdullah. We must hold on to these important values of remembering Aba Abdullah and his sacrifice. Especially poetry. Especially poetry. Poetry is a beautiful means for one to express their emotional rapport with an individual, with an event, with an eventuality. It's a beautiful method for them to portray their feelings about one of these. We look around and we see the various languages that the poetry of Aba Abdullah takes place in. Arabic, Farsi, Urdu. We know in West Africa, in Ghana they speak Nigerian, 
Afrikaans in South Africa, Punjabi, Bengali, and Alhamdulillah, now in English. And the English has been growing over time and it's to help you, our dear viewers, to connect that much more with Aba Abdullah. These various methods of Latmiya, of commemoration, all are there to help you connect. And thus I urge you, I urge you, each and every one of you, to write some poetry about Aba Abdullah. Anything, absolutely anything. Pick any point that means a lot to you in the whole tragedy of Karbala, known as the universe. That was the event of Ashura. Write about anything. And then jump on our Facebook page, Imam Hussein TV3, and send it in. Would love to have it. Would love to take a look and perhaps even read it out on the shows over the coming nights. So please do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you, our dear viewers. We'd love to hear from you, O oh lovers of Aba Abdullah. We mentioned at the start, Abad Wallah, Ya Zahra, Ma Ninsa Husayna, that we swear by Allah, O oh Fatima to Zahra, we will never forget the tragedy of Aba Abdullah. And to look around and to see now as Arba'een nears in closer and closer, the busyness of this city starts to erupt. Just behind me, I could hear a group of Pakistani brothers ever so loud reciting their matam in Urdu. Beautiful. And that's what you get when you walk around this area. In one instance, you'll have the Pakistani brothers. In another instance, you'll have the Arab Iraqi brothers. In another, you'll have the Bahraini brothers. In another, you'll have those from England. In another, you'll have those from Canada. In another, you'll have another and so forth. And it's extraordinary. That all of these people come together and if there's an Arab serving a Pakistani or a Pakistani serving an Arab, the love is the same, the feeling is the same and the intention is the same and that is to serve Aba Abdullah. And it's extraordinary to see. It's stunning to see. Because it fills your heart when you're able to walk around these streets freely to proclaim your love for Nabiullah Muhammad and his holy and beautiful successor Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Yet now, those in Karbala are weary of those who have committed this atrocity down the road, but it doesn't stop them. It does not stop them. It makes them that much more energetic, that much more boisterous to say, Ya Aba Abdullah, they can cut me into pieces. They can take away my life. But so long as my last breath is Labayka Ya Hussein, I will never collapse and I will never stop despite what they do to us. A poet says in the chorus of his Latmiya, Your servants at your door. Your servants at your door to answer your call, Aba Abdullah. He goes on to say, to my neck they'll put a knife. To my neck they'll put a life. They'll want to take my life, but I'll never withdraw. Because your servant is at your door, Aba Abdullah. Your servant is at your door. And he continues. He says, You called on Ashura. You called on Ashura. Where are my Shia? In response, I will crawl because your servants at your door. And we think about the clip from the start of the young girl crawling. She was the answer of Hel min nasirin yansurana. Is there anyone able to help me? Is there anyone there to help me? And as promised to Fatima to Zahra, there will be a nation that will rise, that will remember your tragedy your son's tragedy, Ya Fatima, and this is that nation. Note that the word nation is used, which usually implies one race, one creed, one ethnicity. But when you walk around, you see various ethnicities, you see various creeds, and you see various races. And SubhanAllah, they all unite under that one banner, the banner where they remember their dear beloved Hussein Aba Abdullah. 
In another poem, the poet describes the relationship between Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and Imam al hussein where he describes them as a perfect portrait. And that if one is missing, that portrait becomes faint because Abbas is the paint and Hussein is the canvas that is drawn upon. They are intertwined. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and Imam Hussein are forever together. We even look to the shrines today and they're just meters apart. The same distance as from Safa to Marwa. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas will, has been and always will be the shadow of Abba Abdullah. He will always be there. So I ask you this question. It says that the Shabab, the masters of the use of paradise, are Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas is always in the shadow of this great man. So when they both are leading those into paradise, know that Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas also is there going to be taking us all, insha'Allah. We ask Allah to give us this opportunity to serve Abu Abdullah and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas in every way that we can. We must also remember, and this is something that's only really clicked to me the other day, and that's that all of the perfect 14 alayhim salam all of the ma'sumeen grieve for Aba Abdullah. So not only will our dear Imam al-Hujjah sahib al-Asri wal-Zaman be coming to Karbala to visit and send his condolences to Imam al hussein but as will Nabi Allah Muhammad, as will Ali ibn Abi Talib, as will Imam al Hassan, as will all of the ma'sumeen. However, whilst they all come and circumambulate this beautiful shrine of Bain al Haramain, there are two dear lovers of our hearts whose shrines are left alone. Two shrines that are left alone, those of Sayyid Zainab and Sayyid Ruqayya alayhim as -salam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the numbers that defend those shrines. And we ask him, and we ask Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas to hold our hands and take us to their shrine soon, insha'Allah. Because we yearn to see the golden kubba. We yearn to see the golden dome of Sayyidah Zainab once more and Sayyid Ruqayya. For now though, we stay in Karbala. Our hearts, our presence and our minds stay in Karbala. Everything about us reverberates around Karbala. The Mashai, the walk still continues. And remember today we filmed from the route from Baghdad to Karbala. Yesterday we filmed from Najaf to Karbala. All these different routes from around Iraq are showing and are bringing to us all these amounts of different people coming to the holy shrines. I read something quite beautiful today. And it was that there were some young Iranians, very young Iranian boys, Shabab, who were cleaning the shoes of the Zawar of Aba Abdullah. Cleaning the shoes. We know how dirty the shoes get, yet they were there ready to clean them. And they said, the reason why we do this is because the servants of Hussein shall never burn in hell. The servants of Hussein shall never burn in hell. Why? Because that tear that drops from a Husseini is a tear that Fatima to Zahra collects and then presents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the mahshar on the day of Qiyamah when we are slowly being taken to the hellfire she will appear and say use these tears to extinguish that fire that you are going to be subject to and come with me for you remembered and you commemorated and you mourned for my dear son Aba Abdullah. And imagine the response as well from Haydar al-Karrar. Imagine the response from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Thus I ask you to stand, place your hands on your hearts, look to that golden dome that is being live shown to you from Imam al Hussein and say, Ya Aba Abdullah, we will never forget your tragedy. We will never forget 
the terrible trials that you had to endure, yet you remained patient, you remained steadfast, and you remained upon that perfect path that was taught by your dear father. Thus raise your right hand and say to Abba Abdullah, Labbaika ya Hussein, Labbaika ya Hussein, Labbaika ya Hussein. And with that, we bid you farewell, insha'Allah. Thank you for joining us in the holy land of Karbala, and we look forward to joining you tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Yeah.